Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Write Along. Usually we meet in person, but today we are meeting on Zoom because we have a very special guest with us. Hi, Lacey. Welcome to Write Along. Thank you. Uh, Lacey. Hi, Lacey. <laughs> Hi, Mary. Okay, so Lacey Leapers is owner of Black Fox Marketing. She is an accomplished author marketing coach with a passion for empowering writers to share their stories with the world. Her expertise in book promotion and branding has helped numerous authors attain global awards, best-selling status, and financial freedom in the highly competitive book publishing industry. Through her work, Lacey advocates for the importance of authentic self-expression and creative freedom. Her insights and practical advice will inspire aspiring writers and established authors alike to find their voice and share their unique perspectives with the world. Lacey, thank you for joining us. Oh, thank you for having me. I'm really excited to be here. All right, I'm going to turn it over to you because you have given us a jam-packed workshop and we appreciate it. Yeah, no, you're welcome. Uh, so yeah, thank you everybody for being here. I am really excited to get to talk to you guys. This is, I just love that you guys get together and do these fantastic little sessions. So today I want to talk to you guys about the importance of really understanding your audience. So your ideal readers, as well as how to connect with them. So the presentation today is really focused on understanding your ideal reader, but also how to communicate to them in all the different platforms, like whether it's in person, on social media, like through your content on a website, et cetera. So I'm just really excited for it. Of course, if you guys have questions throughout. Don't hesitate to reach, reach out. Um, Lindy, if I can just make sure you're watching those, that would be fantastic. Okay, if you want to skip to the next slide. Okay, so the biggest thing I want you guys to start thinking about is to think about building a brand instead of only writing a book. Now, I don't say that to lessen the act of writing a book, because that is absolutely like that is a massive. So what I just want you guys to think about is you as authors, you essentially like you have a book, so it means you really have a product that you're trying to sell. So I want you to start thinking about your overall brand experience. And when I say brand, I mean, it's your personal identity as an author. So I want you to think about that because people don't only just connect with the words. A lot of times they connect with the author behind it. And that is true for every single genre. That is why there are people like Nora Roberts can put out a book and she has these fans that will just buy it no matter what, because she's done an incredible job of just building a brand that her audience knows exactly what the books are going to be like Stephen King has an incredible cult following on his book so he could just put out a book and people know it's going to twist all of their fears and insecurities and he's going to dive deep on that and those are the types of authors that have built a brand around it they don't just put out a book they have this thing that people can get behind it's they almost have this culture that they've created and so for you guys your job is really to create that experience for your audience so think about not only like what am I writing but what do I want them to get in terms of value and what do I want to create? What do I want it to look like when people are talking about my books, when I'm not in the room and they're just talking in a group chat or to their book club, what do I want them to say? So you got to think about like what kind of personality, identity, or connection do I want these people to have with the books that I'm writing with the worlds of characters? And again, this is for every brand, whether it's nonfiction, you're helping people grow into leadership, or you're writing children's books that really just help kids explore and get comfortable with themselves, or you're writing romance novels to make people just fall in love with love or to have like a nice, beautiful little escape. So to create that brand experience, it first and foremost and always has to start with really understanding that audience. So who are your ideal readers? And when you can really understand who they are, what they're doing, why what you're doing matters to them, it gives you so much more power and it actually makes it a lot easier for you to go and communicate and to market and promote and to sell to them. Like things that a lot of authors feel uncomfortable doing that whole like, well, I don't want to sell my books. I just want people to read my books and enjoy my world. But to do that, you have to get them to actually buy the books and read the books and hear about you. And that's where marketing and sales comes in. And those things become a lot less scary and a lot less technical or overwhelming when we know exactly who you're doing. So when you know your audience, when you know exactly how your book is going to provide value to them, when and you speak in a way that they are going to understand what you're trying to say. And when you have built this like beautiful community, like the Nora Roberts, Stephen King's, Tony Robbins, the, the Sarah J. Masses, the, um, 
like the Robert Munches, like all those, or it's like, they have this community of people that just love their books that those people have now taken on and they just promote the books. They talk about the works, they sell the books for you. So first, this is why I do want to talk about the target audience. I'm going to spend a good chunk of time on this one because it really does make a difference for you. Okay. So a lot of people, when they start thinking, okay, who are my ideal readers? They typically go to demographics. So they go age, gender, and maybe where they live. Now, those are okay things to do. And in some instances, you do have to have that base knowledge because say, for example, you want to run social media ads on Facebook and Instagram. You can actually target it to go to place your ad to a specific age category or gender, or if they are living in a certain country, like you can set these up so you can get nice and specific, but the more powerful way. So it's like, you still do that, but on top of it, and the more powerful way is when you really understand your audience based on the psychographic. So that's who they are, what they're going through, what they think, how they make their buying, their purchases, um, how do they make their buying decisions? Like you want to get into like the mindset of who they are and what they're getting. So like a romance, for example, you got to think about like, they're picking up, they, I want them to read my romance novel. Why are they picking up that romance novel? So it's like, I want you to start questioning. It's like, what are they going through? And that going through can be, you know what, maybe they just had a really busy week at work and they just want to decompress and just fall into like a nice cozy romance and they just can turn their brain off. Maybe they went through a breakup and they just want to be reminded of some nice love. Or maybe they're in a relationship, they have a very secure partner and they just, they love love so much and they just love the stories of love, right? Like it's important you understand more or less because again, you're going to have a wide range. Like there are almost 8 billion people in this world. Even if a tiny portion are just your niche, like 1% is a mass amount of readers, there's going to be a range of who they are. So when I say, I want you to understand your audience, I want you to understand like, who's the core of that audience. So in general, what are they like? What are their hobbies, their interests? What are they going through? Um, what are the kind of books or, or things are they kind of into? Where do they make the purchasing decisions? What platforms, like social media platforms, are they on? Uh, do they listen to podcasts? Do they prefer radio? Do they watch TV still? Do they subscribe? So it's like really get in their heads. And it's always like, I always really like this question because authors, when they start with me, they go in, they're like, they see, why do I care that they might also play pickleball, right? So it's like, but it's really good to know. And so everybody always kind of laughs. I'm like, it actually is really beneficial, not only because you can start creating content that's specific to that, but it actually helps. So going back to the example of Facebook ads before, yes, you target for age, gender, and location. You can also put other hobbies and interests. You can also put celebrities that they follow. So now suddenly you have, you pick um, 20 to 45 year old female living in North America who also follows like who's interested in gardening, loves outdoors and natures. So suddenly they'll look like, oh, hey, Lacey's in that category. She's in North America. She's 35. She loves being outside. She's part of a hiking group. Um, she's posts lots of pictures of plants, like stuff like this. So they'll actually go based off your interest and like how you interact on the platforms. And like, we've got to make sure we show this out to Lacey because she's prime for this potential for this book. So that's why it's actually really important to know that. And then going even further, it's because you can help associate. So you look at like books, for example, a really great content strategy is when you do like the, like the incorrect quotes. What I mean by that is say you have characters in your book, they have really great personalities, really great connection back and forth. What a lot of authors start to do is they'll use quotes from a TV show or a movie, but they place their characters into those and the ones that really fit. So now not only do you have ones like Sarah J. Mass did this, for example, and she did it with uh, Parks and Recreation, which is a TV show. So you can actually see the episode, you can watch it. So me as a fan of Parks and Recreation, I see the piece of content. I obviously know Sarah J. Mass's characters and books, and I'm seeing the quotes. I was like, oh my God, they're totally like that. Like so-and-so is completely lessy, right? So it's actually, so you feel more connected because now it's like, there's more of like an affinity, more of a connection, but you're doing that instead of saying like, hey, if you love the Parks and Recreation TV show, you're probably going to love my books. You can do it in a more subliminal way. So this people feel spoken to. So once you understand like the who, the personality, where they're at, I want you to next dig into their current state. So this is in the moment, they're about to pick up a book. What are they feeling? What are they thinking? What are they wanting? Like what state are they currently in? And it doesn't necessarily have to be a negative, right? Like any it can be like you think like if you have a book and maybe it's helping people move out of secure or move into a secure relationship, maybe they had a bad toxic breakup or something like that. So what state are they going to be in? They're going to feel very vulnerable, very uncertain, very unsure. So you want to really understand that. 
because then on the next flip is you want to get into their desired state. So now you can start to speak to like, what would they say? But you first have to really understand where they're at and what language they would use in this state, because that's how you connect with them in that moment. So this is how you connect with them to make them want to choose not only just your book versus other books, but your book versus any other hobby or interest or solo time or kids or responsibilities or any of these different things, because you're not just battling against books, you're battling against every other potential hobby or just space or even sleep that a person can have. So why would they pick up not only a book, but then why would they necessarily pick up your type of book? So this is where you connect really on like what they're feeling, what they're going through. And again, the feelings can just be like, they just really love reading. Like they're just an avid reader. It is their total escape. Like they take a book every single place that they go. Like their current state is whenever they can fit in seven, like they have a seven minute gap, they're going to spend it reading. So then opposite of this is a desired state. So what are they wanting to feel? So what do they want to achieve after that state? So think about, okay, so they're reading the book. What do they want to feel? So this is currently where they're at. They want to read it. They want to feel. So you think like that busy mom of four who also works full time, pretty burnt out by Friday at 8 p.m. So she's in there, she's exhausted, she's overwhelmed. She's just wanting to get five minutes to herself for once in the week, you know? So it's like, that's her current state. She wants to feel relaxed. She wants to feel at ease. She wants to feel connected to self. She just wants to feel like herself again. Like she just wants to feel like, I'm just so-and-so like, I'm not, I'm not mom. I'm not coworker. I'm not this. I'm just me. And I'm just relaxing. So she wants to feel that. So that's now where you can start connecting with what your book is going to deliver. This is where you can now connect on like, okay, so what's your advantage? How are you going to take them from their current state to that desired state? And then like, how was your book going to transform that? And literally guys, every, every single genre does this. You might think it's easy to do it for a nonfiction, but you look at like children's books. I saw a couple of you guys for children's books. Sometimes it's the parents like, I just want five minutes to myself. I want to get my kid a really fun book that they just go and escape into the room and do this, right? Or they have a family time. Like I remember I have some of my earliest memories was my mom reading to my brother and I on the couch every single night. And that's such a core memory. And that was a really good way for us to connect and bond, right? So it's like, what do you want to do? It's like, I want to bring my, I want to use my books to bring family families together to do this, to have fun or to teach kids things that might be a little bit harder. Like maybe I'm using it to teach them about death or loss, or maybe parents going through a split or how to navigate two homes, but in a way that you're speaking to kids that they can understand and they have a little bit of control. So you always, no matter your genre, you always have an advantage. The trick for you is to understand what it is about your book specifically, that's going to help them get from their current state to their desired state. When you can understand your audience, like who they are, what they need, what they want, how you can add value, what benefit they're going to get from reading and connecting with your books, this is where it starts to make it really easy for your decisions. So you essentially have this as a guiding framework so that any decision you make in your books, in your world, even in like character arcs, like as simple as that, or cover, the like cover designs or titles or what events to go to, what, if you are speaking in an event, what to say, what to deliver, what kind of content to create, what kind of, you wanting to do an incorrect quote, what specific quote to do. You always get to come back to, does my audience want this? Would this create value for them? Why would this matter to them? And how will they best hear this message? So if yours is like, no, like, will they want this? It's like, you know what? Yeah. They're really not a fan of this kind of side of it. So a good example, like romance novels. There are a lot of different kinds of romance. There's everything to like very PG, very clean to full on, like you're blushing as you're reading the books. You really have to understand the difference with this because if say yours are very PG and calm, but you start posting really spicy pictures on social media, there's a disconnect. So now you're starting to speak to people who would not enjoy your books because they want that full on smut. They don't want something that's clean where the characters barely even kiss. And then the character, the people that do want that they're thinking you're probably writing smut because that's the type of stuff you're putting out there. It's like, oh, they're clearly not a fit for me. Meanwhile, they're the perfect person for your book. So you literally have to think, and it, that's why I say like it's a guiding framework because you can literally go like this piece of content. What's the key value of it for them? Like, what will they get out of it? Are they going to find value? Is this going to add? And again, value can be like in entertainment, education, information. It can just be a reprieve. Again, value is not always like something value can just be like, I'm just going to give them a really good laugh in the form of a meme that I think they'll find funny. So you just think like, are they going to do this? Because at the end of the day, once you've written and published your books, 
it is now for your audience. If it wasn't, if it was just for you, you would have kept it as just a journal entry, but you've published a book. So now it's like your responsibility is to your readers. And that's why you come back to that brand experience. So your responsibility is what can I get? How can I give value? And what, um, what are they going to most need? And that's where they feel more connected. And then that last, like how they best hear this message, what words, terms, and phrases do I need to use so that they understand? So that's where you typically speak into that current state. So they actually feel very much like in the moment, what words do they say for their desired state? Okay. So now that you know the who, this is where it comes down to like how to speak. So this is your brand voice. This is your personality. This is the, the delivery of what you're going to say to them. And this is just simply saying, if you're putting out content or you're speaking to people and you have no engagement, people aren't saying it, you're probably not using the right words, terms, and phrases. They don't feel spoken to. It's like you go to France and you speak Italian, right? So it's like, you may as well just be speaking a different language because you pretty much are. So if people aren't resonating, if you're putting out a lot of content, you're not really getting many followers, you're not getting a lot of like engagement or likes or anything, you're not really seeing a lot of sales, there's a good chance that maybe there's a disconnect between what you know of your audience and how you're trying to communicate to them. Okay, so a couple of things for you guys to think about in terms of your delivery of like your personality and how you can connect across, because these are all stuff that's important for you to know these things, but it's all things that your audience should be able to get that as well. So like the first is your brand goal. This is your vision. This is what you're wanting to create for your readers, that end experience. It's like that Stephen King is like, I want to take them deep into layers of trauma. Like I want to not just surface level scare them. I want to make it that they see a red balloon and they feel triggered for a while, right? Like that's like deeper. So this is like, what do you want to create for them? They should get this. The purpose is why that matters to you. So this is what I want to create for them. But personally, why does it matter to me? Why do I care so much? Why am I putting in all this work? Because it is, it's a lot of work. And a lot of you guys also have full-time jobs. It's a lot of work to write the books and get them finished, get them edited and processed. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of energy. And then it's a lot of work to just communicating it out there. And, you know, this industry, like every other industry is very flooded. So there are a lot of people in the marketplace. So it takes a lot of work if you want to get your books out there and you have like a really big following. So why does it personally matter to you? Like, why do you like to do that? And it could be as simple as like going to that Stephen King example. It's like, I just love the human psyche and the way that we connect with our emotions, the way we choose like take action from our emotions. So just be like, I'm just, I just love the human mind and how like different things can affect and, and twist it. Right. Or it can be like, maybe you're helping someone with a self-help or trauma or something. It's like, cause I know what it was like to live in that state and feel really helpless. And I want to ensure there's never a single person that has to feel the empty loneliness that I felt, right? Like there's always like why it matters to you when you have your purpose locked in and you know, who you're speaking to, that's what helps keep you going forward. So your mission, this is your brand focus. If your vision is what you're trying to create, your mission is what you're doing now to help achieve that vision. So it's not just, oh, I have four books. It's what are you trying to provide? Like I'm creating a mindset shift or a perspective change. I'm, I'm through my books, through my speaking, through my engagements, I'm teaching people around the world how it's our choices in or like our choices are our responsibility. And those are the only thing our choices are the only thing that actually affect the future outcome of our life. Right. It's like, or I'm helping people break through limiting beliefs. I'm helping people reconnect with their family. I'm helping parents just have some beautiful, amazing time with their kids or spark conversations, or just create like a nice, like a little like escape with it or fun learning resources. Right. So it's like, what are you providing through your work, through your words, through yourself to help achieve that vision? Your brand values are how you're doing this. So this is just what matters to you. So at your core, what do you, and maybe it's like, it's connection, it's relationships, maybe it's intimacy, maybe it's um, connectedness, maybe it's open, like whatever your core values are, maybe it's just, I really want to empower so-and-so to be able to speak up. I want to give kids autonomy. I want to, um, I believe that a book can change um, a, a perspective or a book can change someone's life in four words. You can completely redirect the the direction someone's going in their life, right? It's like, it's what you care about. So these are things that are personal to you. These are like your core beliefs, but this is stuff that your audience should really get everything in here. Even if you don't say it, people should get what you're about based on your content, based on when they hear you speak, based on your work as well. If you write a thriller, like they should, and your whole goal is like completely like taken deeper past those surface level scares, they should understand that. And your content should also be just as creepy, scary, right? Like, so it's like, they should get that at every end. That brand experience should be consistent no matter what you're doing. 
your tone is your personality. This is where that really comes through. So it's like the little sounds, like it's not what you said, but how you said it. Absolutely. So uh, there's this woman, Kasia Urbaniak, and she wrote this book called A Woman Unbound. The whole premise of this book is we have this like inner energy or she calls it like an inner animal, but it's like our inner energy. And it's like, it has to match the words you're saying. So this is when you have a conversation with someone and they're like, are you okay? And you're like, I'm fine. Clearly you're not fine. Right. So it's like, it's really about matching it. And the same thing comes when you're talking about your books or your, your, um, what you're creating. If you're a romance author and you're like, I just want to write like beautiful, like books to really just make people fall in love and love with, in love with love again. But people are asking about your own relationship or things like this. You're like, eh, it's fine. You know what it's like, right? Like all of a sudden your energy is very different. You're saying like, yeah, my relationship is fine, but your energy is very different. They're like, you don't really seem like this big romance or a romantic person or anything. Right. So it's like, just think about like your tone is really like how you say it, what matters and, and how that kind of comes across. That's like where you get to put like the pizzazz of you through everything. Okay. And then this one is where this is really coming across is, and this is good for like, of course, if you have books, if you have books, but you also sell products or services or merchandise and swag, or maybe you also sell like a coaching consulting program, or maybe you do workshops, retreats, you have multiple things, or maybe you write in multiple different genres. At the end of it, you have one core brand message. So you have one thing that comes across. That's what you need to really understand. It's like at the core crux, this is what I am about is what you have to answer. So this is where it's like, no matter what genre you write in, it's like, I want to think you can be writing children's books, fantasy, and um, say romance. And your whole thing could be like, I just really want to create the this escape into a completely different world to give someone like that sense of adventure and, and something else, right? So it's like at the core of it. So whether you're writing children's books, the kids should feel like they can escape into an adventure. If it's a romance, they escape into like the adventure of romance and love and falling in love and everything else. So you just got to think about what's your core message. And then the proof points are simply like, how can you back that up? So if you're like, hey, like my core message is like, I really want to teach people how to like break through their limiting beliefs. And you do that, you have it in, you have workshops, you have retreats, you have um, digital courses, you sell online, you have books, you have paid speaking opportunities, you're doing all these different things. At the core of it, they should say like, hey, what's so-and-so, like, what's this person about? Oh, like they just really want to help. Like when, whether you hear them speak, you read a book, you buy one of their courses, you're going to be pushed. Like you're going to like be removing some barriers there and getting rid of those narratives, right? Like that should always remain true. The proof points are just like how you back that up. So this is things like best-selling, award-winning, um, you know, like massive like sales stats and everything else, but it can also be years of experience. It can be like number of books written in a series. It can be why you're connected. Don't forget. It's like your skills, values, morals, life lessons, everything has come together. Like your book is really just an extension of you. Like I would say like your book is your brand and your brand is yourself. Your books are just an extension of who you are and what you went through with life. If you can write a really great romance novel because you've experienced some beautiful connections, whether it's like, even like, like through family and friends and partners and everything else, it's like, then you can talk about that. You can say like, as someone who's just been an avid reader my entire life, as someone who's been writing books for as long as they can remember, like there is value in what you can bring to the table. You just have to understand what are your wins and then keep adding in all the other things. Of course, when you can say award-winning, best-selling author, like all this stuff, like, yeah, that opens up doors but there's a lot of value you can also bring to the table. Now you can also just talk about like the engagement that you have with your audience. You can talk about the culture you've created. You can talk about how people really connect with your words. You can share some of the beautiful messages you've gotten on testimonials of someone saying like, mm -hmm. I devour this book in a day, right? Like there are all these wins. So just dive deep and like, what are some of the wins that prove? It's like, yes, this is what I'm about. And this one, I just like to kind of give a good call out because it's always important to think about your visual. So when we talk about like your brand, your message and everything else, visual is just a really great way to hammer that in. That's why a lot of companies will have like the consistent brand colors and logo and font and stuff like that. Pat or humans are very patternistic creatures. So we look for things that are very similar and we see something similar and it has a really great, like a certain brand experience that we come to know and identify with that. It becomes really easy to cue them in. So visual is what people typically see first. Think about like you're scrolling on social media. What are you doing? You're just looking at stuff. Usually something catches your eye, whether it's like maybe kind of like a text or a cool picture or like nice like frame or something like that. And then very quickly, like the words come into it as well, right? So you quickly look with your eyes, you stop. And if you see something, you have like consistent colors or themes or something else, people almost get triggered. And especially like if they have um, 
like they have a really good connection with your books. They're really good following. They're like really engaged. They just love the work and everything you're doing. It's like they quickly have like a really good brand experience with you. They'll see something that looks in your post. They'll stop and like, oh yeah, it's so and so. Like it's Lindy. Like love it. What's she talking about now? It just creates like that quick little like visual check in for it. And this extends to everywhere. So you can have this in your content. You can have this when you're speaking. Like, are you getting banners to put on stage, or when you're at an event or doing a reading or signing, or do you have like nice? If you have children's books, do you have like cool resources that align with the colors in your book? Does your website match kind of the colors? Does it have the same feel and vibe? Like you have a very like calm nature and tone. Does your website, like, is your website hot pink or neon green? Probably shouldn't be if you're kind of going for a very calm tone. You want consistency with that because people do look. And again, people think of us as like humans are just really kind of lazy. So we want to look for stuff that makes sense. If we give something that's completely different, they'll go, oh, that doesn't fit. That's why what's your core message and what's your core, like part of your brand that you can carry throughout everything. And this is even like your books. Like there are a lot of authors. It's like, how are your books going to look like on the shelf? Do you have all, like most of your books are like a certain size and all some book four is like a lot tinier and completely bright, different color. Well, your big fans are going to get kind of annoyed because they like to put stuff on their bookshelves, right? So just kind of think about that or even think like, here's a, I'll show you guys a great example. And this author has her spine is like very connected from book to book. So each is individual, but the image goes across. So when you have this on your shelf, it looks really cool. And then all of her books are kind of like that very much that, that grayish kind of vibe. She has like the different colors. And so it's like, there's just like kind of a nice consistency. Okay. So your content strategy. So this is where you're actually going in and speaking. And this is like, I'm talking specifically about social media a little bit more today, but this is essentially, it's like, now you know who you're talking to, you know, how you need to talk to them. So, you know, what you need to communicate with, like, this is what I'm trying to create my vision. This is what I'm doing now. I'm providing in terms of value, my mission. This is why it matters to me, my purpose. This is the core takeaway I want you to have after you connect with me, either in person or online or through my books. That's your key brand message, right? So it's like you have all this stuff. Now you carry that through in your social media, on your website, in your books, in your description, in your author bio. When you're speaking or you're getting on a podcast or into you or you're applying for a writing competition, all that should be similar. So now you really just have like essentially a base script to go off of that you can build. And it just, again, becomes so much easier because- now you don't have to think like every single time, like, well, what can I say? It's like, well, what's, let's go back to my core values. And what am I trying to get across here? It just gives you a guiding framework for your message. I will say when you're thinking specifically about like social and digital, obviously the first choice is what platform should I be on? A lot of people ask, and I get that question asked probably the absolute most. My answer is, and always will be, it really depends on your audience, which is why we start with who's your audience first. Know that, again, almost 8 billion people in this world, you're going to find a healthy chunk of your audience on every single platform that's available. There can be a new one that's created tomorrow. A bunch of your people are going to be onto that platform. Does it mean you need to get on there? Well, if you don't have the capacity, then no, it doesn't. So you also have to kind of think about like what fits for you, like where's your audience, but also what's what fit or what fits with you. For example, if you absolutely hate Twitter, probably not a good idea to be on that platform because you're probably not going to be as engaged. And like, when you look at like social media platforms, you really should be creating content specific for each platform. If you absolutely hate using one and you're never going to look, you're probably going to miss messages. You're probably not going on it as often. You're probably not even creating content or you're just maybe being lazy about it. That's not even worth it versus you can just focus because most people have multiple platforms anyways. So I just have a couple lists of different things like obviously on the social side, some of the more common ones. And then obviously on the digital side, some of the more common ones, a uh, couple cool ones and that I want to like highlight like Goodreads. And there are a lot of platforms like this, where it's essentially just like an online book hub for us book nerds. It's just like a really, it's like kind of like a social media platform. Maybe you guys haven't heard about it, but it just to connect you with different books you want to read. Another unique one is Pinterest that a lot of authors authors kind of sleep on and don't think about um, Pinterest is very much like Instagram in the sense that it's a lot of like pictures and everything else and they're actually like a lot of fantasy authors or nonfiction authors or personal development or even like recipe book writers and everything else that are using it because you give snippets of what you're doing in the work and people go on Pinterest just like find memes and quotes the cool thing about platforms like TikTok YouTube and Pinterest is they are SEO friendly SEO stands for search engine optimized. So it means when someone goes into Google and wants to search how, like, say it's about leadership, they're like, how can I, how can I get a raise? Results from TikTok, YouTube, and Pinterest can actually pop up in those search results as well as articles that people have written. So that's why those those platforms are actually really cool. So think about like, can I use some of this? And then of course it comes down to like what caption we'll talk about in a second, but what do you write in your captions? What has to go in to like help add that value? So 
again, just a couple of things to think about and some different types of platforms to start looking into and see like, A, is my audience there? B, is it something I really like? And C, okay, how can I best utilize this platform? Your main goal, so whatever platforms you choose, you must be consistent. So you are going, and you've probably heard me mention that a couple of times already. It's like consistent brand experience, consistent brand voice, consistent message, but you also have to be consistent in your voice and message you're doing. If you are posting, like how often you're posting, um, the value you're creating, as well as the engagements, your whole goal is to just be very consistent in what you're saying, when you're saying it, where you're saying it, that you're consistently creating value for your audience, which goes back to the target audience. Like, Will they find value in this? If it's no, then you probably shouldn't be posting about it or talking about it, right? Or maybe not necessarily, but how can you frame in a way that they'll see it as value, right? Sometimes people, you tell them things they don't necessarily want to hear. So how can you deliver that message in a way that they are going to understand its value for them? Or you want to just do like a cool, a picture of a, a tea you're drinking. Why would they care about that? So how can you deliver that? Maybe your caption is along the lines of like taking a, a quick break to map out um, a new character or a new plot for my next book or something like this. So again, think of like, what will they care about within this? And then of course, engagement, you want to just make sure that you are staying engaged, you are encouraging engagement back. This is how you create that community of raving fans where they feel more connected to you as well. Okay. So a couple best practices into here. Uh, you heard me say like the consistency, um, you want to obviously create value. You Again, I said like you want to get engagement. So when I say engagement, and this is specifically talking about social media, likes are great, follows are great, but those are vanity metrics. So you can have a lot of followers, doesn't necessarily mean they're all going to be buyers of your books. So what really matters, the metrics that like me and marketing or anybody should care about and be looking at is how many comments am I getting? What's the value? Like are the comments a quality? Like are people like, is it just a bunch of like like bot accounts and like, Hey, I sent you a DM and reach out here, or that's great. Promote it on this page. Or is it, Oh, I love the dynamic between these two characters or totally shipping that, that duo or oh, like your words just always just make me stop and think like, right. So it's like, what's the quality of the comments as well as like the amount of comments you're getting, are people saving, are people sending it to other people? That's the better quality. Cause that's just someone is identifying with what you've written. So now they've related. So now you're speaking in a way that they understand the value. You've done a beautiful job of connecting and now they're starting to engage and they're going to keep coming back. So now you have to keep creating that value and that consistency in that value. And that's, you start to really strengthen that brand experience. Uh, the next is like obviously immediate response and engagement. So when you post something, be as responsive as quick as possible, because then it's teaching like the algorithms that, Hey, this is being really good. A lot of people are commenting. A lot of people are posting. We should keep sharing this. And it just makes people feel heard. It makes them feel, it doesn't mean like you have to keep on your phone and be as soon as something happens, you respond right away, but you should kind of be on top of it. Like within the first 24 hours, like try to make sure you're double checking, like every couple hours, at least was people are saying stuff. So you can just keep that conversation going when they're still in the moment of seeing that piece of content. And then of course you want to utilize each platform and have features, you know, depending on the different platforms, like is your bio updated? Do you have a great photo? What's your name? Is it consistent across all social media platforms? Is it Lacey Leafers on one, Lacey L on another, author Lacey LI on another, right? It's like, where's the consistency? Can people find it? But are you using even the features in there? Are you using the highlights or the channel, like the broadcast channels on Instagram? Are you, do you have a group on Facebook? And um, do you have a WhatsApp channel that's kind of created that's aligning across? Do you have it linked to it? Like, are you using every functionality in there, not just posting as well? And then the, the biggest one is like, just time block your tasks. I think this is just a, a good little best practice because social media can be really big to create a whole bunch bunch of content. If you're like, man, I got to post like every single day, or there's some people that post four times a day. That's a lot of content. But even if you're posting five times a week, it can still feel like a lot when you're also trying to write books. You're also trying to promote. You're also trying to market and build and be the admin and the marketing and the sales and the CEO of your entire entrepreneurship business. So time block, like spend one day and be like, okay, hey, I'm just planning like what kind of content I create for this month. And then I'm going to write it out and then I'm going to go and design it on the next day. Uh, another one is like, okay, I'm going to get like everything set up in my scheduler, or I really want to focus on writing some new stuff or this day, I'm going to be looking for speaking opportunities. The second you're starting a time block is where it's like, you really start to get your time back, which is really good. Okay. So just wanted to break down the different content components and sorry, I know we're like two minutes over my little slot, but 
um, the couple things. So when you are writing and putting out content, here are some things you need to think about. The first is your hook or title. So that's like the first sentence. If it's on a reel, it's like the first thing you say. If it's in your caption, it's that first like few, like I think it's like six to seven words that people can see to capture their attention and want them to continue reading or listening further. So think this goes back to really understanding that audience, and that current state and the words, terms and phrases they would use. This is where you capture their attention. And then the rest of the caption is where you provide your content. So the value. So you further affirm what that means. Maybe your your hook is a quote that makes them just think and you have a, their pictures like a beautiful thing of like just being in nature. And then the caption is like you, where you can elaborate a little bit further on like what that like what that means to that person. The CTA stands for call to action. So this can either be in written form or it can be spoken. And this is what action do you want them to take? Every single post, you should spark some type of action, whether that's like, give this a like, if it resonated with you, share this with someone that you need to hear this message. Um, what's like, what are you currently reading right now? Like, just like try to get them taking action or like a sales, like buy it, like it's available on Amazon. You have like a link to it. So it's like, what, what is the purpose of this piece of content? So what's like, what do I want them to do? And then what action do I need them to take to support that purpose? Your hashtags, those like where it has like the little like numerical sign and then like the words, those are just simply to help you place it in front of people that are following. So this is also where it helps to understand your audience's like hobbies, interests, and people they're following. So if you have content, like for example, if someone is, you have a book that's like helping people like break through those limiting beliefs, Tony Robbins is a really big person that does that. So maybe one piece of content you do can be a quote from Tony. Well, one of your hashtags can be a Tony Robbins, right? Like, so it just like, again, like think about what they're going through and now you start to do, and you don't need many hashtags, like depending on the platform, it's usually just three to five, but try to make sure they're as specific as possible that match a post, have some media usage, like maybe around like 300 to 500,000 for usages on Instagram, maybe a little bit more like over a million on TikTok. So just that many more people posting, um, but just make sure it's kind of fits. And like, again, Hashtags are almost kind of like, what would someone, what word term or phrase would they search in maybe Instagram to find content or on Amazon to find a book? Those are good ideas to start getting like your hashtags. And then of course the visuals is just like have an eye-catching picture or video or book trailer or something that just supports the caption as well. Okay. And then this, and I've got uh, there's supposed to be five character. Um, this is a document I actually have for you guys that is like just a nice free resource for you guys. But when you're thinking about content, because it can be this whole big beast, there are really five different categories. Your job is to just kind of like circulate through each of them consistently. So you're always showing the full parts of yourself. So you're showing your entirety of your brand. So these are five different kinds. There's affinity. The goal of affinity type of content is to build engagement with your audience. So this is where you're posting stuff like, you know, that they really love plants and you've got like a really cool romance novel on that. Maybe you'd have like a nice picture of like a new plant that you got. So they feel a little bit more connected to you. Maybe you have some memes about stuff like that. Again, so you might have laughed when you thought like, well, I guess they like plants, but now so you can create some stuff that just connects. It's not social media is not just for you to sell your books. It's to build a connection with your audience and to build a community. So they want to feel connected to you. That's where you'll see some authors will post, but like they just had a kid or they show like life or on vacation this week, taking a step back. People love that because they feel more connected to you. So they feel more engaged. And when people feel more engaged, they will buy more books. They will be like those raving fans will tell everybody else with you. Value is the next of just like, what are you giving across? This is type of content. This could be like tips, tools, resources. It could be education. It could be entertainment. It can be like, I just like a really cool quote that just makes them like rethink something. Sales is just specifically like you trying to sell or promote. So this can be direct or indirect, like buy my book, it's here. Or indirect could be like, like quote snippets or short passages from it. Or, hey, if you want to get a free novella, like click here to download it. So it's sales because you're getting someone to take an action to connect with it, but you're indirectly trying to promote your work for them to want to go and buy it. Like if they read a quote and like, this is amazing, or it's a book trailer, they see a book trailer, like this is fantastic. Right now they can go in and like, I should probably buy this book. The direct sales is like I said, it's like the books on pre-sale now, get it here. It's X percent off and short time only, or I'm doing this giveaway, like sign up for this, right? So just kind of do that. And then the authority is where you're trying to build your credibility. So this goes back to like that core message. And we talked about those proof points, like why are you the person that can add that value? And like, what is it about you and, and that? So this is where you showcase like you have speaking engagements or um, you've just got like a massive book order, like, hey, did a signing and sold out or things where it's like, I got this award, like things where it's like, I'm credible as an author which just adds some like extra value and oomph 
to it, or it's like, hey, like I'm now writing, like I just mapped out book eight. That's credibility as well, because it shows like I'm committed to being an author. So it shows there's like this commitment from you. And then finally, characters where you just get to show your personality a little bit. Because again, people don't just connect to the books. They also connect to the author as well and the author's why and everything. So it's okay to post some pictures about the tea you like or maybe your dog that likes to sit by you in your office as you're writing and everything else or some hikes that you're doing. It's okay to show your personality a little bit. So that's it. Um, like I said, as like just like a nice for you guys, um, two things. So one that those pillars we just talked about. So I actually have a document I sent to Lindy. She's going to send you guys. And it just has like those five pillars. It also is like a quick little cue, like what each is for, but I have a bunch of prompts. There are over 70 prompts for different types of content into that document. And it's ideas for each of those categories. So literally guys, it can be as simple as like you're planning out your content, just go like, and go top down. Like if you sit there and go one, like you get the top one and it doesn't resonate with you at all. Look at the next bullet. Like you don't have to force yourself, but it's just there for cute and go like, okay, Monday, I'm going to look at affinity. Oh, this one really hits. Perfect. Tuesday, I'm going to look at values. Okay. I'm going to like third one down that really hits. So I'm going to post about that. Like just use it as like to just make it as easy as possible for yourself and just keep rotating through. So however many, if you're posting two times a day, then you get to do two of each of those every single time. The other one is I'm just as a, a nice treat for you guys. I told Lindy to offer you guys each like a free strategy and like an hour long strategy session. So feel free. Lindy's got the link. She'll send you guys to book. And if you want, we can just get on a call, talk about where you're at with your books. And I can just give you some good like direction feedback of like ne next steps or where you can focus, or maybe you want to talk a little bit more about content, kind of wherever you're at, just kind of a nice little redirect for you guys. Okay. Any questions from any, anybody? Uh, Lacey, uh, would you like to just share with everyone, you have a Facebook group and once a week mm -hmm. you offer a uh, similar type of mini little workshops, often taking one component of what you've shared today and elaborating on it. Can you tell people how they can follow you with that? Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, I should absolutely send you a link. I'll make sure I get that to you guys here. So I have a Facebook group. It's a book to business blueprint. It's specifically for authors. It is really just a hub for you guys to come to learn, to be able to celebrate wins with other authors, but to get education information. So I do go live every single Wednesday, 10 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. I give good trainings like yesterday's, for example. I talked about using influencers to help promote and sell more books. So like how to find influencers, how to tell if they're quality of value, what to, like how to use them and then how to reach out and connect with them. Uh, other ones I talked about like finding podcasts. So looking for speaking opportunities. So again, how to find podcasts are a really good fit. I'll talk, I'll dive even deeper on like your target audience, like how to go, where to create them or specifically onto content. So yeah, I give a lot of like different training and resources into that space. So absolutely. If you guys aren't currently in it, please feel free to join. It's, I would love to have you guys there and come in. It's a great spot. You can ask any questions you want and I will, I'll make sure I get a link over. But yeah. Feel free to join in. Like I said, I do a lot of like different trainings. I'll like, I usually just pick one topic and dive deep in it, try to keep around 20 minutes. And I have tons of resources in there. So you can even go to the media folder. I have all past like uh, all past lives. You can go back and watch as many as you want. I have two really good guides that I've created. So one was like the seven phases of writing and marketing your book, essentially how to incorporate marketing into every single phase of writing from like concept to past launch. And then the next guide is it's, I think like well over six hours of content of literally just like building your business around your books and what else you want to create and provide in terms of value. And like, I really dive deep into a lot of these topics as well. And those are all just free trainings in there too. So feel free to pop in, look at all those trainings, ask me any questions you have and yeah, I'd be happy to have you. So Celia has a question. She yeah. Asks, How does an author manage switching genres? I'm glad she asked this. I'm very interested in this one as well. That's a great question. And I think that's where it comes back to like, what's that core brand message? Cause there's a way to do it. And there are a lot of authors that will do this. Um, if you can give like what your two genres are specifically that I can speak a little bit more specific to that. But while I'm waiting for that in general, it's where you can essentially go like, Hey, like I'm giving you the same quality value. Like there's one, um, Rebecca Yaros. So she, like, she had the fourth wing books. It was massive because before that it was like contemporary romance that she wrote. And then all of a sudden she wrote fantasy. So 
the entire book world was blowing up like crazy because she had such an amazing, incredible following in contemporary romance. And it's a completely different genre. So like the whole delivery was like, it's the same great storytelling and vibe and, and messaging or like style of writing and pacing and world delivery, but now in fantasy. So then it's very easy because you can go to like the audience that already has an engagement. And it's like, hey, for anybody that loves fantasy out there, I've got a new series. So you're just playing. The nice part is readers typically read multiple genres anyway. And you even look like going from like writing children's books to adult books. Well, children's books, it's usually not the six-year-olds that are going to the store to buy a book. It's usually still their parent. So now you can communicate. It's like, hey, I've got something for you too. And Lisa Reynolds has said, Lacey, thank you. Very helpful. I'll be in touch. Oh, you are welcome. I'll take a minute to share in my strategy meeting. Uh, you know, Lacey asked me a very important question. And she asked me, when you have engagement, who is responding to your posts? And then she elaborated on, those are the people who you're marketing to. So, you know, that's a great way to gauge. Are you actually marketing to the people who you are trying to target? Mm -hmm. Or is your engagement coming from somewhere else? That shows you that's actually where you're targeting your social media. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I found that really helpful. I really appreciated it. And yeah. I really appreciated your uh, conversational tone and, and interest in my work and answering the questions and just, you know, ongoing expressions of helpfulness. So thank you. Oh, you're so welcome. No, you're very welcome. Yes, Lisa Bay has a question. How to make visual branding consistent when you have very different genres? Oh, yeah, um, that's always fun. And so again, it goes back to like that core of who you are. So this is where you can really play into your tone. You can now... I will say there are authors that like, this is where they'll have a pen name where they can keep it very separate because they love the idea of having like a deep, dark, creepy thr thriller and maybe a nice light rom-com type of vibe with their book. So some will choose to have two different names. Like they'll have like the one name and a pen name so they can keep, they find it's very easy to keep themselves with it. You can also still do that strategy in the exact same space. You just make it very clear that you have the two different ones. So then people know and they can show up. So for example, a website, you can have like your page split. Like you can do like a cool little like visual right in the middle. It's like for all you like that just love getting scared or for those that don't like would like to just wrap up in her blanket, but they kind of like go here, go here. So people can like self-select to kind of go into it and they like that vibe. So then you're now speaking to your audience very differently, but you go in. This is where you really make sure your visuals match the tone of each genre. So then say if you're on social media and you're using, you want to just keep it all under the same one name, which you absolutely can do. Just make sure it's very custom to each one. So then for example, you have like, let's just go like Instagram, for example, or really any platform, but your bio should very clearly state the multiple genres you write in. And then you should have a link in there. So you can use a link tree or something like that, that shows people a different. And then so you have like a link tree, um, I don't know for any of those yeah. that have link tree, but I'll uh, just show you quickly. Like link tree is just like a link that you can go in that you can put different categories in. So then for example, you can have like one pick, like a general color that matches and you have a header that says like thriller romance. So you have it very specifically and you put your books and you can change like the specifics in there. So you just kind of showcase like, okay, again, you self-select which one you want to go into. And then with your content, when you're writing for the books about like the thriller, for example, make sure like the color scheme, the vibe, the font matches more of that. So then all the types of content that's religious, like the thriller very much has the same look, vibe and feel. And then the stuff that's more on the rom-com end can have like the very different colors. So now this way, when people see your content, even like your hashtags are going to be very specific for the difference. So like rom-com, um, Hallmark or like whatever, right? And the thriller is going to be like edge of your seat and like those types of things. So now it's not only your, is your kind of going to get shown to more people, but then when people go to your page, they can very clearly see the difference and it's okay. Cause you're telling them, Hey, I've got multiple things. So you're not trying to like hide and speak generally to everybody. You're just very clear. Like this post is only for those of you that really love the thrillers. This is only for you that's there. So that's a way you can do that. Okay. Celia is asking, what if I prefer to brand my characters? Oh, I love when people do that. 100% yes. 
So again, people really get into characters. Uh, you'll see this a lot, especially in like some fantasy books, but also like anything, like really any fiction can do this. Children's books can do this. And it's really cool because now it's like they become an entity of their own. So when people are reading something, they identify with that. Like the reason people really connect and what's beautiful is when someone's reading a book, they feel so connected to certain characters that is them aligning with someone who's completely made up, but it's really cool. So it's like, they find like an affinity, they find engagement. They're like, I, I get what that person's going through. That's why we read books and we cry. We swoon. We have to put the book down because we just need a pace. We cuddle up with like our feet on, on the seat of the couch because we can't have them dangling. And it's a scary book, right? Like we like feel with such emotions when we're reading our books. And that's when you've written this beautiful, like these characters and story and world. So absolutely carry that forward into your content and your message and allow those characters to shine through because that's what your audience can really connect. And that's where you can do like that incorrect quote generator, for example. So you can read the quote and like, I'll see him like, oh my God, that's so alien. It's like not even like it didn't even happen in the book. It happened in a TV show, but it just happens to carry across. So I, I absolutely love whenever I see authors doing this and it works because people get that. And actually a lot of authors find it easier to speak that way because what did you first do when you started writing your book? you're writing from their perspective. So content allows you to do the exact same thing. It's easier because sometimes it's usually authors that trip up as when now they have to write from their own words because like, well, I don't know what to say. I know what I can make my characters say, but it's harder for yourself to do. It feels a little bit more vulnerable. So absolutely. And if you do, definitely send them to me so I can see them. Okay, hey, uh, Leslie is asking, is there a place on Instagram to create community like there is on Facebook? Oh, yes. Really good question. So you can actually have, and it might not be unlocked for every single person. Social media platforms are very famous for having, and I'm looking down, social media platforms are very famous for having, um, like they delay some of like the, the functions and features to different people and they kind of put it on phases. But if you go into your message thread, so right at the top of there, you've got your messages and you'll see you've got like your primary, you have general and you'll have channels. So you can actually create a channel and that essentially works like a Facebook group. It works like, and you can have like differently, like you can have like, um, like Facebook has broadcast channels are rolling out. Some authors will use uh, WhatsApp for like, they'll create these own channels. Some will use discord. Like I have a discord for like all everybody that's kind of rolled through my program and everything else. So you can use like anything else, but the Instagram specific is channels. And it's a great way to just connect, send information and be like, Hey, I've got this, or here's a sneak peak or here's like a cover veal it's going live tomorrow like it just it's a really cool spot to build community and it's just it's such a great thing when you can have like yes you have your content but you have like a channel you have an email maybe like on Facebook you have like your group now that's where you really start to build community and that's where you really like jack up the engagement with it because now people feel very connected to you and they're like the raving fans that you just have to say like you can just post that channel like hey Book three is coming out. Here's like the, the release date. It's on pre-sale now and people just click it and buy it. Yeah. So. Lacey, that's all the questions I have okay. on the chat. Uh, unless someone has something that they'd oh, like. I see, I see Lisa has a hand up. Yeah, I had one other question that I noted. Um, I, I'm interested to hear your thoughts when you were talking about, you know, your target audience and and those four points about, um, you know, creating the value for them and why mm -hmm. What would it matter to them? How will they best hear your message, et cetera? What are your thoughts on disclaimers? Because sometimes you'll see a book that will have some sort of disclaimer, like this book contains content, uh, you know, not suitable for young children or this book, you know, I, I don't know. I'm not sure how I feel about some of that. And I'm yeah. interested on your take. Yeah. And I love that she asked that question because there, I have actually been getting asked that lately too, because there are a lot of people that do it. In my opinion, it's something that someone kind of started because they're worried about like a trigger type of thing. And then other people are like, oh, I guess maybe we have to do it too. And I think a lot of people are doing it not necessarily. In my opinion, if you're writing a thriller novel, do you need to write a disclaimer? Like this may scare you. <laughs> right? so like, like that, like it's like write a romance novel. It's like, it might make you feel like happy and good and in love. I think if there are certain ones, it's maybe like a little bit more specific or like maybe you get like, really like, there are like some books that have like a really heavy, intense rape scene. So like maybe you kind of do something like that, but you can also just kind of do that in your content. Few people are just going to pick up a book and not even really look at the cover, read a description or anything else and just buy it. So you can disclaim what it's about in your book description, 
when you're speaking, when you have interviews in your content, so people know what it's about to do it. So personally, I think disclaimers are a bit redundant. Like the whole goal of a book is to evoke emotion with someone. Now, whatever that emotion is, is dependent on your book and the genre and your characters. But yeah, I just, I personally don't. And again, if you feel more comfortable doing it, absolutely, that's fine. I just think it's like, do your job when you're speaking about the book in other areas, like the book description, everything else, where it's like, if someone reads a book description, they should understand what kind of emotion they're going to feel. In fact, that's the best way to write a book description is when you immediately evoke emotion or when you have a book trailer or a post that creates that emotion. So that's what's like, what's the key purpose of this? I want them to feel this because that's what they're going to feel. So that's that it brand experience through your writing, being consistent throughout all that stuff. So your book description should just do that for them to like, oh, this is going to be kind of an uncomfortable read, but I'm here for it. Okay. Well, everybody, thank you so much for your time. This was so much fun. If you do think of anything after the fact, Lindy's got all my contact information there. So feel free to reach out, book the strategy call. I'd love to we'll chat with each of you guys and, and help you out if you're working through some stuff. And, and yeah, and hopefully I'll see you in my group. Like I said, I go live every Wednesday at 10 a.m. Mountain Standard and Constance putting some extra information into there and tips and tools and everything else too. So thank you all so much. Have a fantastic rest of your day. Stevie, thank you. That thank you. A lot of information. We really appreciate yeah. you taking your time and everything you've shared. Oh, you're so welcome. It was my pleasure. Okay. Take care, everybody.